in the previous uh, two videos we talked about DNA replication and here the DNA is giving rise to new DNA and we call this autocatalytic uh, mode of DNA action. Here we are talking of heterocatalytic. That means DNA molecule will help in synthesis of RNA. Though we have seen the structure of mRNA, but here we are actually talking about the detailed process of transcription. So heterocatalytic means DNA will help in the synthesis of mRNA and then using this mRNA, protein will be synthesized. These processes are given specific terms. Formation of mRNA on DNA is known as transcription and this is the heterocatalytic mode that we are talking of and from mRNA when protein is synthesized the information of DNA through mRNA is translated into protein. So this process is known as translation. We will be first discussing transcription and then we will take up translation. The DNA which helps in the protein or this mRNA synthesis first, let us see what we call them and what are the reasons for giving them these terms. Say this is the DS DNA that we are drawing. DS DNA. That means double stranded normal DNA. 3 prime, 5 here, 3 here, 5 here. These two strands are anti-parallel. Let us write down the nucleotide sequence on these two to understand which one will be used as the DNA template. Say here we are, uh, say fifth one, we are talking of A, T, C, G, G, C, T, A, T. What is going to be the sequence on the complementary strand? We know the base pair rule. A is going to pair with T, T with A, C with G, G with C, C with G, this with A, T, A. This is going to be the sequence. If we want the codes on this DNA strand to be transcribed, suppose I'm looking for this code. These codes are read in triplets. So if I need this code for protein synthesis, this code is going to code for an amino acid, this will code for another amino acid and so on. I want this protein to be synthesized. Then this strand becomes my coding strand. Coding strand. So should I be copying or making mRNA on this one? Let us try this and see whether it is going to give us the correct information or not. If a molecule is synthesized here and the one which we are drawing with the red line is going to be our mRNA. So if we synthesize mRNA on this coding strand, let us see what is going to be the sequence here. The sequence which we will get in this case is going to be complementary to this coding strand. What is going to come in front of T? We have to keep in mind this is RNA and in RNA T is replaced by U. So in place of T, it is going to be U here. In front of T, it's going to be A, here G, C, G, T will pair with A, A will pair with U in place of again T and T will pair with A. So, is it the same code which I was looking for? I was looking for A, T, C code and on the contrary, the code which I get here is something like this. It is G. Same like what was on the DNA, A, same like what was on DNA and U, here it is T. So when I code or when I transcribe on the coding strand, I get the mRNA which has the code of the complementary strand. But if we transcribe the other strand, we will get the code like this one. So this is not correct. We cannot transcribe on the coding strand. So 
Let us now transcribe the other strand, the complementary strand. This is our code which we are looking for. And this strand which should be transcribed is known as the template strand. So we should be transcribing the template strand in order to get the code of the coding strand. Let us see whether we get that or not. So if we make mRNA here, what is going to come in front of this, these nucleotides of the template strand? What is going to come in front of T? Though it is RNA, we know T gets replaced by U. So here it is going to be A. In front of A, it should pair with T. In case of RNA with U, this is going to be C, G, C, U, A and again U. So is this something like this? Is the code or the nucleotide sequence? Same as that of the coding strand. It is A here, A on the coding strand, U, T, same, C and C, G and G, C and C and so on. So if we transcribe the template strand, we get the exact same code which we are actually looking for. So out of two DNA, we need the code of one. That strand becomes our coding strand. But we do not transcribe that. We transcribe the complementary strand of DNA and that becomes our template strand. So now let us see the enzyme which is going to help in this process. The enzymes which help in RNA synthesis are known as RNA polymerase. In case of prokaryotes, there is only one RNA polymerase. And this RNA polymerase, or let us write only one, only one type. And this RNA polymerase helps in the synthesis of all three types of RNAs. That is rRNA, tRNA and mRNA. Whereas, in case of eukaryotes, there are three different types of RNA polymerases. So, in case of eukaryotes, the RNA polymerases are of three types. And they are called RNA polymerase 1, RNA polymerase 2, RNA polymerase 3. And they are responsible for synthesis of different types of RNAs. RNA polymerase 1 helps in synthesis of rRNA. RNA polymerase 2 is responsible for formation of mRNA. But as we know that mRNA develops or is formed from hnRNA. So we write hn and mRNA. And RNA polymerase 3 is responsible for formation of tRNA. So, in prokaryotes, only one RNA polymerase enzyme which is responsible for production of all three types of RNAs. Whereas, in case of eukaryotes, different types of RNA polymerases help in the formation of different types of RNAs. This we have to remember, one RNA polymerase 1 helps in synthesis of rRNA, 2 helps in synthesis of mRNA or HNNM both and 3 helps in formation of tRNA. So, 3 different polymerases. This RNA polymerase, as we are talking of mRNA synthesis, we are talking of either RNA polymerase 2 in case of eukaryotes or the RNA polymerase of prokaryotes. RNA polymerase as such is made up of five subunits and there are two parts. One part is known as the core part of the enzyme and there are some other parts which attach only at the time of a particular reaction which is going to take place. So there are two alpha subunits, one beta dash unit, one beta unit, one omega unit. 
So these five units, that is two, three, four, and five, they make the core enzyme. And they, these subunits, they perform various functions. For example, alpha units bind to initiation proteins. They bind to initiation proteins. Beta dash binds to DNA template. And beta binds to the nucleotides and these five subunits they make the core enzyme core means these five units are always going to be together there are two subunits which join and detach as and when required those two subunits are sigma sigma unit is responsible for elongation or initiation, we can say initiation of the mRNA or initiation of the RNA chain. And this will attach only when this initiation of start has to take place. The second, which is again temporarily attached, is known as rho factor. And this rho factor is responsible for elongation of the chain and termination. So this helps in elongation and termination. So when we talk of RNA polymerase, there are two parts. One, the core enzyme and the subunits which get temporarily attached. The core enzyme is made up of five subunits, two alpha, one beta dash, one beta and one omega. And sigma and rho factors attach to this core enzyme only at the time of initiation, it is going to be sigma. And then during elongation of this mRNA strand and termination of this transcription process is going to be the rho factor. Using this, let us first draw the transcription unit and let us see which all structures are where and then we will come to the actual process. Let us now draw the transcription unit. These are the two DNA strands. The polarity, this is third prime and five here. The other strand is anti-parallel so it will have the opposite ends free. And we know that DNA or RNA, newly synthesized, always grows towards the third end. That means it will always be starting from fifth prime and going towards three prime. This is the direction in which the RNA is going to be synthesized. Or we can say that RNA polymerase can synthesize mRNA or any RNA only in this direction. If this is the third prime, then if RNA is transcribed on this, then it will grow from this side to towards the other. That means it is going to be the fifth prime towards the third prime of the new strand. That means this strand has to be taken as a template strand. So which strand becomes our template strand? The one which has polarity 3 to 5. And the strand which has polarity 5 to 3 is our coding strand. So this is the coding strand. This is the template strand. And at the fifth end of the coding strand is attached a promoter. So this structure which we are drawing here is a promoter. Promoter is normally a sequence of nucleotide and one such very common sequence is TA, TA, TA and we are talking of DNA and that is why there is T. So this is known as TA, TA and something like this. So this is called Tata box. This is the most common promoter site which is Found. And 
the promoter is attached on the fifth end of the coding strand and it is attached at the third end of the template strand on the template strand and when something is towards the fifth prime it is called upstream and when something is on the uh, third prime it is called downstream so if we are talking about the promoter gene or the promoter side on the coding strand it is towards the fifth end and that is why it is called upstream so when we use the term upstream we are talking about the fifth end of that strand and on the template strand it is attached towards the third carbon and that is known as the downstream so if we have to talk about the promoter gene or the promoter side we will say that promoter is attached upstream on the coding strand so whenever we are using the term upstream we are talking about the fifth carbon and the downstream of the template strand again whenever we are using the term downstream we are actually talking about the third carbon so on coding strand towards the fifth carbon on template strand towards the third carbon this is the promoter site or promoter gene at the opposite end is attached the terminator So this is the place where it is going to terminate. Now again, using the same thing upstream and downstream. If we have to give the location of terminator, then how are we going to write it? We will write that the terminator is towards the third prime of the coding strand. And third prime we said we will use the term downstream. So towards third carbon of the coding strand, that is downstream and fifth carbon of the template strand that is upstream and the strand which is going to work like coding strand is going to be 5 prime 3 so our coding strand is 5 prime 3 template strand is going to be always 3 to 5 because on the template strand the new RNA is going to be synthesized and if this is our template strand say this one and on this when RNA is synthesized that RNA will be from 5 towards 3 so our template strand should always have the polarity 3 prime 5 prime and RNA polymerase will always synthesize RNA starting from fifth prime going towards its third carbon because at the third carbon is present the functional group. If this is the transcription unit, transcription unit, we have to be very careful when we are labeling these things. Promoter side, terminator side, which is upstream, downstream, the coding strand and template strand with their polarities. On this template strand, the new RNA, that is mRNA, is going to get synthesized. From where will it start? From the promoter gene. RNA polymerase will come and bind at the promoter site. So, the new nucleotide, which is going to be formed, it is going to start from here. When RNA polymerase binds here, this thing is RNA polymerase. When this RNA polymerase binds, the first factor which is going to associate with it is going to be the sigma factor. Because sigma factor is the one which is responsible for initiation of the mRNA synthesis that is transcription and then when this polymerase moves in this direction the new nucleotides RNA nucleotides get added and when this RNA polymerase comes till this side say for example all these RNA nucleotides are formed 
as soon as the rna polymerase starts to move the sigma factor it falls off because its job was only to initiate and after that when rna polymerase comes to this position say what comes and binds here is the rho factor and this rho factor is the one which is responsible for elongation that is formation of the new nucleotide chain and ultimately the termination when this polymerase comes here this is the rna polymerase that is the time when even rho factor is going to detach and after that all the things are going to separate new strand that is first it is going to be the hn rna hn rna and then it will undergo splicing and everything to form mrna so how this exact process is going to work there is a transcription unit the promoter gene or the promoter site is upstream on the coding strand and downstream on the template strand this is the place where the uh, transcription process is going to start first the rna polymerase comes and binds here the core molecule sigma unit joins it because its role is to initiate once the process has begun sigma detaches the rna polymerase now the other unit gets attached to it that is rho factor rho is responsible for elongation and this rna is going to go come up to the terminator gene here rho factor will terminate mrna synthesis and everything which is going to get separated so this is how our mrna gets synthesized let us sum up this process and write down the steps the first step is going to be initiation and for initiation to take place before that it has to recognize and for recognize there is this promoter site so we can say it is recognition and initiation of rna synthesis now how is this going to happen first the promoter gene has to be identified recognized and then there is rna synthesis which is going to start second step is elongation that is new nucleotides are going to come here and a chain will get longer and longer and third step is going to be termination now which all factors are responsible for these three steps recognition and initiation is done by rna polymerase enzyme plus the sigma unit has to attach to it so sigma unit should be attached to the core enzyme elongation here again rna polymerase plus after detachment of sigma unit the rho factor is going to get attached here so there is this rho factor and termination is again by rho factor so these are the three things which are going to take place first recognition of the promoter gene and initiation done by the enzyme core enzyme and the sigma factor then the chain is going to get elongated and always it will elongate towards the third prime again the rna polymer is now will attach with another subunit that is rho factor which is responsible for elongation and it is the same subunit which is also responsible for termination and after this chain of rna nucleotides is formed we will call it a hn rna and then it will undergo splicing exons and trons will be cut using ligase exons exons will be joined it will undergo capping and tailing to form mrna one important thing which we have to remember here is for this process of transcription manganese and mag magnesium ions are required manganese and magnesium divalent ions are required for this enzyme to work so here these are two which are going to act as activators so now we have synthesized 
mRNA using DNA and this is the step which is known as transcription. Now in the next video we'll talk about the process of translation.